Hi, it's Lou with us here. Thought I'd bring you another technique. Um, you know all of my little techniques. These are all techniques that I like to share with you because I think there's a real importance that we can add all these techniques together or we can take things. It's a bit like when you go shopping and a recipe. You take the things you need for what you need for that meal. And it's the same with these. You take bits from other people. But there again, to me, I love to see little techniques and loads of them. So I'll show up now and I'll get on with it. So I'm using um, a stamp from one of the recent Achanda shows, which is the Mindfulness by Janine. And it's a beautiful lily stamp. Now, lilies are always got that feel about them, haven't they? And I did um, one of the samples on the show and it, it was really successful. Well, people liked it. So I thought I'd show you how to do that. So it's a lily. So I've got a piece of board. This is a piece of board, mount board, um, and it is recycled. I've got some white paint and from gold and this is titanium white and titanium white is the strongest of all. You can use gesso if you want, but I want a paint base, not a gesso base. Not really, don't worry about it if you haven't got it. So I'm just, again, I've damped my brush down, very important, and I'm bringing the paint little bits and you can see I'm pushing the paint in because what I don't want to do is overload it. If I overload it, what I'm going to do is have to sit here for half an hour drying it and I don't want to do that. Gesso dries very fast because it's made from gypsum, which is like a chalk. Um, acrylic paint, it's got an extender in it. So the extender means that it extends the time. So if you have it too thick, extends your drying time plus it makes it tacky and I don't want it tacky um, it was invented acrylic it was invented as far as I know by the Golden Company um, in the 80s up till that point there was very there was there was two major genres there was like oil watercolor um, you've got others like pastels and stuff but there was none in between um, or there was your printing inks and stuff so in the 80s they came up with golden, came up with acrylic. And after that, we had this absolute, oh, everybody was like, oh my goodness, what's acrylic? And it just opened the doors for people, opened the doors, because acrylic actually works so that you can make it look like watercolor or like oil. So anyway, can you see that? Well, I've got grubby grub, but can you see that? It's called dry brushing. It's now dry. So. What I've got is my lily stamp from the collection and I've got an archival link. Now, I would always uh, give that a minute or give it a blast. Not with a heat gun, I would give it a blast with a hairdryer. And the simple reason is you want to dry it, not, not heat it up. Um, and a little travel one is great, you know, on your own. I tend to use my hairdryer more for my work than I do my hair. In fact, I don't use it for my hair. So I'm inking this up, nice, you can do it on your platform if you so wish. I'm not really worried, I'm just going to give you an out outline so you can see how it's done. And I'm just going to put this straight on and down to one side. Now, remember what I said, don't just pull it straight off, whip it off. Give it a time, let it sink in. Don't forget there's, there's a layer of acrylic on there as well. So I'm letting it sink in. I'm letting the ink sort of activate and sink into the stamp and the, uh, the surface. I've got a perfect stamp. I sound that, that sounded really big headed, but it's not. So what I can do if I want is I can introduce using a piece of cat. I don't want, I always get upset when I have to, I'll use this one. Sorry for reaching. And I'm just going to introduce a ghost print at the back, a second one. Um, if the ink's already on, that's uh, perfect. Now, what you, what it, by that, what I've done is I've just want the flower because I want it to sort of like as if it's coming in from the side. So, if you don't have a water bucket, easy way is just spray your brush with it. I have got one, it's just over there. So, I've got some colours. Uh, you can choose any colours you want. I'm going to use my golden again. Um, I've got the teal, it's just so versatile, the teal. So versatile, it's untrue. I've got the quinacridone. I have these coming up on a show as well. Um, they're just so use you. I that is my still my first bottle from three years, and it's still not joking about half full, maybe more. So it does go a long way. And that's my favourite colour ever because that colour goes to all of them. If you think about your printer at home, 
and we think that the, your primary colours are red, yellow and blue. Well, your printer doesn't work in colours like that. It works in colours like that, that, cyan, oh, magenta, and I can't remember the other one. But you'll notice they work in colours like that for your printer. So that's why we get this wonderful sort of crossover of colours. Anyway, anyway, so I've got the teal. I've got the quinacridone. I'm going to put a tiny bit, shall I, a tiny bit of the blue on. Um, and this is a very dark blue and I'm, I don't need a lot and it's an ultramarine, um, very strong. And I'm using two different paints, that's like a lesson isn't it? Two different paints, I'm using a heavy body and um, a fluid. So it doesn't matter which I use, it just means one's less viscous than the other. A little bit of water on here and I'm just going to put in, I'll use this, damp my brush down tiny bit of the dark with a bit of that and I'm going to put a wash in right and I'm just going to put that in now again what I did before is get your water and then just now what happens is I put acrylic on the background before and where I've put acrylic on it almost gives it like um, what we call a resist so it'll sort of sink in areas differently to the other areas and I'll show you what I mean now. So what I'm hoping to do is sort of get an armour as well and an armour is when you have two different or you have colours that start dark and go light all the other way around. So I'm just going to put a really really loose, can you see how this can now become a watercolour as I was saying and you know, it's it's quite hard to make. You can't make a, a watercolour heavy body paint because it's too translucent. You can make it a translucent one, and that means it's sort of see through. Um, so I just give it a coat there, and I'm going it so I want it to look like um, it's all in water. And add a little bit more, and I'm just going as I was saying. You know, the water's already down there, so you don't need. Um, to worry that it's going to sink in too fast. Go in and out. It doesn't matter if you go onto the leaves itself because um, the leaves are already green and so the blue on top of it won't, ma won't worry. So I've got that colour. I'm just going to get the lid. I'm not being tight, it's just that I don't need to pour out any, any more colour. I'm just going to get the blue and I'm going to drop it in to the water and I'm just going to drop it in. And I'm using a stippling technique, which is around the edge because on the stamp you'll notice it's got like the water rings so I'm just going to around there and this is not a technique it's not like you don't need to uh, be able to paint the Mona Lisa to do this it's just a stippling technique so what happens is the water and the paint is at the end of your brush and as you push it on the page it leaves like a residue on it so that's all you do let that sink in and it creates more of a a watery effect so you do that I'm just going to bring it down a little I think I'll add a little bit more darker here and I'll tell you why simply because um, at the front it would be darker anything that's coming towards the front of a canvas would be darker so I'm putting quite a heavy line here but I'll show you how I get rid of it you don't want to leave it like that because it'll ruin your work because it looks too hard and heavy anything with a black line does so just remember that when you outline in your work again clean your brush off get rid of the excess and then what I can do now is just add more water and I'm doing my wiggle and that's just bringing it out a little bit right. so now you could get your hair dryer on that if you wanted leave it but you'll find that as you rub the, the acrylic I'm using a cloth. I do use a cloth now. I don't like to use baby wipes or anything. I've got some biodegradable ones, but I tend to use this because it's friendlier. I'm just wiping. Can you see now how the gesso, uh, sorry, the acrylic has caused these scratchy lines here? Well, that gives it like more of a bed, a background. Then what you do is you get your quinacridone. In fact, let me just wipe this up because I know what's going to happen. I can see it happening now. I can see me dipping my paintbrush in the wrong one. So... And you can use this afterwards, believe it or not. So I've got the quinacridone as a gold and it's a rust colour and you do not need a lot. So what I'm going to try and do is just give it like an orangey feel and then I'm going to put pink on it. 
again the pink so it's a real beautiful I'm going to use it as a watercolour at first and just don't be mistaken when you see paint and you think it's fluid that it's weak it's not it's just it's made with a different binder and um, a gel medium if you have a gel medium and put colour with it you've made paint so yeah there's stuff like that I've had people say to me how do you know that I, well I'm a bit I love research and I love to know what I'm doing and the only reason I'm doing that is because I know what what will work then I know that it'll work with certain paints and stuff and it won't work with others so it's that's the reason I like to know about paint so and then pink that's a bit too much for me so what I'm going to do is just dab it off and you can see again the white in the background where the you know the white acrylic's gone again now I want to finish this only because I think you, it's really good to see how quick it is so again I'm going to put a little bit of dark like I did before where the actual flowers overlap where the the lilies overlap in the middle, that would automatically, naturally be darker. So what you need to do is make sure that if you're going to put a concentrate of colour that it's going to be there. And then what you can do is pull out, just add a little bit more water to it. Like I say, it does not matter at all if you go over the lines. Because uh, you could look at artists like Monet, who does his water lilies. And that's very much... Um, where I'm getting my inspiration for this. So, take some off. I'm going to introduce a tiny bit of pink. Now you think, no way. I know, I know, I know. But a tiny bit of pink on this, and it gives you a bit more water with it. Such a lovely, soft, pinky colour. But it's a warm, and I'm going to drop some more in. Uh, like that, it's a little bit too in your face. But then if I just lock that out and then do the same with this one. But you see that one's in the background anyway, so it won't be as bright as this. So again, putting the colour on. You wouldn't really think, would you, that these two colours would look anywhere nice together, but you've only got to look at nature, all colours go. Right, can you see how that is way, that's way too much. So all you do now is another little tip, is bring in some white. Just get a little bit of water with it. You bring in a little bit of white now. Just to the tip. It softens the whole thing up. I'll do the same on that in a minute, just to give you an idea. So, tiny bit of white. really softened it up because what you're actually doing now by adding the white you're actually giving it um, a chalk paint a chalk effect so I'm just going to add some more white in here to make it more visible and you can go around it with a pen if you want later on I don't you know you don't always have to and then you can add the pink to the top of it if you want put a little bit here where it would be a little bit stronger and then if you always want to soften your paint just use your fingertip Easier. Again, a little bit more white just at the top, and a little bit of this with the warmth. There we go, that's better. Now, so that's quite simple. It really is. You've got some nice pinks going, You've got different colours of pink. So, what we're going to do is just darken it up and add a little, make a little bit of green. So, I've got a little bit of green here, um, quite a bright green. Um, might be a little bit too bright for this, but, but you can just darken it down so anyway you've missed a bit put a bit of green on there so this is just the leaves in the back and again if you want to add any depth put a little bit of the teal with it and darken it again and just add that and then use your fingertip again where it's darker there So we get there, you leave it to dry um, and then what you do is you get good old glossy accents. Now I hope this is un unbunged. 
Yes. So what you do now is you want to introduce, I think maybe I've missed a little bit there. Sorry, I just can't leave it. I'm just going to put a little bit of pink there. Right. Now what I've done is I'm going to accentuate the colour. Now you can do this, um, go over it in a line if you want, say. I've got a pencil with me. But I don't want to do, don't, if your paint is wet, it will, it will damage pens, but you can actually just go, you know, around that if you want. I'm not going to go to, I'll have to put a couple more lines on it now, but you can if you want, leave it. I'm not going to do that. So you get glossy accents, concentrate on this one. And I'm just going to put the glossy accents on the flower and I'm going to draw and then scratch. It doesn't matter if there's an hole in, in, in the middle of the glossy accents. I'm just going to draw with this nozzle all the leaves, uh, petals, sorry. You think, well, why don't you just go over it? Well, it's funny you should say that because if you do that um, and you miss a bit, it, it looks strange whereas if you'd actually follow in the shape of the, the petals when you'd miss a bit it, it just looks right it doesn't look wrong so just a little trick so I've added that just to the flower I'm not going to put it on the, the leaves I'm going to add um, you can have pencil crane to that and anything you want and then I'm just going to introduce those lines around it now they're like movement lines and I'll draw them on the back and show you so They're like half circles. Now you let that dry, and when you let, when you've dried that, what happens is these all sort of intensify. And I'll get you one that I did earlier, and then you can see how I've added some more dark to it. But I've added all these glossy accents now. What you can do is just rub them off, any residue off. But you can't see it at the moment because I'd put another layer on there and then whatever this is now would stay that colour because of the glossy accents on but around it would be darker and you get these wonderful like residue. But I can always, if I, if I fancy to, this is where you can, just to show you, you can always go back in, add a little bit more colour here, there and everywhere. So it's not finished. You can highlight it if you want. You can doodle if you want, but I just wanted to show you the technique of how you get from that. It looks very different, but it won't do once it's dried. And here's another version as well uh, that's not finished, but it's halfway there. So you've got lots of different, let me turn it around, sorry. Uh, lots of different techniques, but I've added some stickles and I'm going to finish that. So that's one technique, loads of different ways. I really like that, plus you get messy and then you have to tidy up. I don't like that bit though. Uh, so thank you very much as usual. I uh, hope to see you soon and I'm um, really looking forward to see what you do. Thank you.